Hey there, and welcome to the second retouch, part five. In this section, we are going to be doing dodging and burning. We're going to sharpen, and we're going to be putting finishing touches on this image. I can't wait. All right, let's go ahead and hit F for full screen and uh, create a new layer. Group that with itself by hitting Command G, and we'll just call this D B for dodge and burn. All right, now this is really pretty simple. My method for dodging and burning, um, well, we're just going to do the, <laughs> the most simple method there is, just to show you that um, it will work well. Let's just change a layer from normal down here to soft light, and then I'm going to use my brush tool. Now we're going to use our retouching brushes that are included with our download. Okay, and then I'm just going to paint black and white on this layer, keeping my flow at about 10%. And where I paint black, it's going to get darker. See? And where I paint white, it's going to get lighter. Okay, cool. Now, if you use that, like, that was like a super, like, kind of exaggerated effect there. But you can see how I can use, let's just zoom out and we'll go ahead and start. Um, using black and white to dodge and burn, for instance, this area under the eye is just a little bit dark. So what I'm going to do is make sure my brush is set to white, and we're going to start painting white on this area just under his eye, just to lighten it up a little bit. Again, this is not affecting anything like skin texture or color or whatever. This is just lightening things up a little bit. There we go, because we're painting with white. And if you want to make an area darker, just hit the X key on your keyboard, and then you'll be painting with black, which makes things darker. All right, what's an example when you would want to do that? Well, maybe around this eyelid, eyelid crease, huh? To add a little bit of like contrast there. Yeah, maybe up around this way too, around these lashes here. Maybe darken those up a little bit, and darken the corner of the eye right there. Darken this area here, the lash line. And then maybe I want to lighten it. See how this kind of comes around there? We're going to paint with white now. And kind of follow that line there. It's going to help better define that area. All right, then we're going to do the same thing right up here and if it gets to the point where you think maybe you've painted too much you can either just paint black or you can just grab your eraser tool and erase it away all right cool let's go ahead and paint black here just to kind of complete that eye shape. All right. Cool. Paint a little bit of white down here. I'm gonna get rid of that. Great. Let's look at the before and the after with that. Really nice. Really nice so far. Okay, and we're just gonna keep going basically. So my goal is that just by you know you watching <laughs> this whole thing happen, that you we get a really uh, good idea of where dodging and burning take place in an image. I'm gonna retouch, and then when it comes time for you to do it on your own, you're like, okay, I need to make these areas a little lighter, make those other areas a little darker. And it won't be difficult for you. All right, there we go. Make this area a little bit lighter there. All right, we'll go paint this little line down here. 
right under the eye. I'm painting with white now. All right, let's go ahead and zoom out. Paint with white right up there. All right, and if you find you're painting with like too much pressure, try lowering your flow of your brush. Or if you're like painting and not enough seems to be showing up, go ahead and try increasing the flow of your brush. Looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and just darken this area down just a little bit. All right, we'll do the same with this area here. Nice smooth dark transition there. Okay. All right, let's see the before and the after. Some nice looking eyes. Cool, let's create a new layer. This is just fun. You can do this all day long. I mean, I can anyway. Um, create a new layer. We're gonna carve some cheekbones a little bit more. Maybe create a little bit more shadow on this side of the face to make it <laughs> if you ever do something that looks like that, grab your eraser tool, because that doesn't look good. <laughs> All right. Cool. Now we're going to paint it around his head a bit, just to give his head a little bit more shape. I'm going to grab the eraser tool. All right. Oh, you know what? This layer is set to normal. I was like, why does everything look so horrible? Make sure to set your layer to soft light. I was like, this looks like someone who really doesn't know how to retouch did this. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, set your layer to soft light first. That's uh, That'll help. <laughs> All right. Let's create a new layer. I'm going to change the layer blend mode. <laughs> from normal down to soft light. All right, we're gonna zoom out even more. here okay let's create a new layer grab our brush tool and I'm gonna paint dark right down there change our layer blend mode to soft light the reason I'm doing this on a bunch of different layers is that it just kind of keeps me from like let's say I like everything that I did on this layer you know I'm but now I'm gonna start on the lips it's just a lot easier to create a whole new layer and then I can like adjust the opacity and erase on that layer and things like that. So it's like once I'm ready to kind of move on from an area, it's not a horrible idea to create a new layer. All right. There we go, kind of highlighting this area up there. Let's make that visible and invisible. You can see it looks good. It's just a little bit too much. So let's go ahead and lower the opacity of that. All right, this one's a little bit too much. So we're gonna lower the opacity of that one too. Remember we're working with uh, a guy, so 
a girl we would retouch quite a bit more but a guy is um you know you don't want it to look like too like quote unquote pretty <laughs> unless you do then good then do that all right now we're going to work on his neck a little bit um i always burn right under a person's like chin area like that see that just kind of gives them some like separation between them and the background or sorry between their face and their neck excuse me all right we'll lighten up the back of the hand just a little bit all right and i'm going to darken up these hands just a little bit here painting black all right color correction as I'm looking at this there's like certain parts you know I'm looking at an image and I'm trying to think like okay what do I like what do I think could change you know like do the eyes look good is your color correction good yes this I'm like this area looks a little bit too retouched so I'm gonna open that up I'm gonna find where that is there you are. And I'm just gonna either like lower the opacity or you know what, I'm gonna keep that invisible. There we go. Cause he's like, he's almost a little too perfect. Let's just take this and like bring it down just a little bit in opacity. Like, yeah. So I'm gonna hit the V key on my keyboard. V as in um, very nice or verisimilitude. Um, and I'm gonna hit the number zero and that's going to change the layer opacity to 100. If I hit the number three, my layer opacity goes to 30, okay? So it's a really easy way to just change the layer opacity and kind of get a good idea of, you know, what works. All right. There we go. So bring that down to about 60% or 70%. Yeah, 70% to me looks pretty good. He doesn't look overly retouched now. He was looking a little bit too like pretty and clean before, in my opinion. There we go. Yeah, he looks more like gritty now, which is great. Okay. Looking really good. All right, now if you want to do any more kind of dodging and burning, let's just create a new layer. Um, you can zoom out you can just overall even like skin tones and things like that so let's create a go ahead and make it down to soft light you can see how this part of the face and this part of the face are a little bit lighter if I wanted to just paint black a little bit on those parts of the face it would even that out light will you know paint white a little bit on his head paint back black a little bit on the neck All right, so let's see the before and the after with that. So you can see just like there's the before and the after, just evening things out, right? So dodging and burning can be at like a very super close level too. Like look at this, what we did, you know, at this level, right? That little stuff like in and around his eyes makes a difference, right? But then when we go out here and turn this layer on and off, you can see it works at this level too with a giant brush okay so um yeah dodging burning is just like a super powerful technique there we go and that image looks a lot more finished now beautiful okay well the next thing to do we're going to create a new layer go ahead and group that with itself i'm going to call this sharpen okay and we're going to make a stamp visible shift option command e as an elephant to make that stamp visible layer I'm going to hit shift command U to desaturate it. Okay. And now we're going to change it from normal to overlay. And I'm going to hit control J a couple times, which just duplicates that layer over and over again. And we're going to go ahead and make all of those invisible. All right. Now this layer, we're going to run a high pass filter. So I'm going to go to filter 
down to here to other and over to here to high pass. Okay, now the goal here is that we're gonna create several different high pass layers that are going to sharpen this image. This is a relatively similar process to what we did with our first complete retouch. Um, it's pretty much a standard part of retouching and finishing images. All right, so there we have our first radius of five pixels. Okay, let's make this layer visible. Another high pass adjustment layer and we'll go to 10 on this one. All right, this will be another high pass adjustment layer. We'll go to, let's try about 20, why not? And then this one, I'm gonna really crank up. I'm gonna just go to like where it's like, are you sure? Um, there we go, 147. All right, and we're gonna save that one for later. Okay, so now we have different levels of sharpening that are gonna be appropriate for different places of the image. Now, our first level, let's go ahead and view this image. There we go, that looks good, 25%. So our first level, that's pretty much good everywhere. I am gonna go, go ahead and put a layer mask on it though and paint black around the shirt and the background and areas like that because I, I really don't need that stuff sharpened. Like it's just not, it's only gonna look, I wouldn't say worse, but it's gonna pull attention away from the face, which is like, you know, if you haven't figured out right by now, like that's the part we want people looking at. So um, anyway, if that's news to you, then, um, then the, <laughs> May your journey be great. I don't, I don't know what else to say. Um, I'm going to put a black layer mask here. H hold Alt or Option and click on the layer mask button. There we go. And now we're going to paint white over areas like the eyes. And this is going to give us extra sharpening. We'll do the eyebrows as well in here. Maybe a little on the tip of the nose and maybe on the lead lips all right zoom out and see let's just turn this layer off and on yeah that looks nice now this layer we can choose to use this or not I'm gonna hold alt or option click on that layer mask button and then let's try just adding a little bit more sharpening and see if it's like horrible or see if we like it all right, kind of looks good. Let's just lower the opacity of it a little bit. There we go. Now I pretty much can't help but look at those eyes. Check out the difference this made. There's the before and the after. Like I'm, <laughs> I have no dang choice but to stare into those eyes because they are way more sharp than the rest of the photo. <laughs> so good. Now this layer is kind of just affecting everything. So what I'm gonna do instead of like masking this in right away, I'm gonna just drop the opacity of this layer. And what it's doing, there we go, let's zoom out a little bit more. What it's doing basically, remember this is the layer that I really cranked up the high pass, like I went really far on it. Um, instead of like being so much like a local adjustment, like just in the area of the eyes, this is more of like a global adjustment where it's kind of just affecting the entire image. All right, so now I'm gonna just change my opacity. So I'm gonna hit the V key on my keyboard and I'm gonna hit like the number eight, we'll go to 80% visible, four, we'll go to 40% visible, two, we'll go to 2D. 2D is not a word, um, that will be 20. All right. And basically by hitting these numbers, I'm just kind of trying to figure out like where, where it looks right, you know, here at 50%, that just looks too much, right? It, it looks like uh, kind of cheesy almost. All right, here at 20% it looks good. You almost kind of want to make the like effect like disappear into the photo. Like you don't want to be able to tell that I just did this to the image, which is basically like a big dodge and burn to everything. Um, like, but with it on, it should be nice. All right, let's look at that whole sharpen group. There's the before and the after with that. Pretty awesome. Let's look at that in combination with the dodge and burn. So that's the before. And that's the after, before, and the after. Wow, that's insane. All right, and if there are any areas you don't like the Dodge Mer, like this layer I think was just a little bit too much. 
you can still go in here and change these things at any point in time. So it's, you're never locked in. And that's why, you know, I like to do this on a bunch of different layers. So I can always go in and decide like, you know, man, yeah, maybe I went a little bit too much on the eyes. And I'll just bring that back a little bit. All right, looking good. All right, now here at the very end, we're gonna create a new group and we'll just call this, um, Finishing steps. Okay, basically I'm gonna do a little bit of a vignette in this image, which is gonna help bring the focus back to our subject a little bit more. I'm gonna bring the sharpening group down in visibility. Yeah, somewhere about 80 or 90%. 100 just seemed like too sharp. Okay, let's darken our edges. I'm gonna grab an adjustment layer. We're gonna go down to curves and I'm gonna click here in the middle and kind of just drag that down. Okay, now I'm going to go to my elliptical marquee tool and make a selection right around our gentleman. Okay, and then here on my layer mask, I'm just going to invert my layer mask. So I'm going to hit Control or Command I, which is just inverts the layer mask. Because our, our layer mask was white, I just needed a six and black on it. Okay. Now we're gonna to go to filter and down to blur and Gaussian blur. Cause I need this, like, I don't want, <laughs> obviously that looks like it was done in Photoshop. I want to recreate something that looks like it was, you know, done in camera or whatever. All right, so we're just bringing the blur a little bit larger. There we go. So there's the before and the after. And then I can move this around. If I want to move it around, I can stretch it up by using the, there we go, by using the move tool there. All right, now let's try one more thing. We're gonna add another bit of, you know what, let's just use curves again, because we already use curves, and curves and levels are, for the most part, they're, they're pretty similar. Okay, now we're gonna lighten up just a little bit, just like that, starting here in the darks, so I can open up some of these um, shadows. I'm going to click on my layer mask and we're going to invert it by hitting command I. And now we're just going to brighten this area up just a little bit. All right. So let's go ahead and make a selection right down here in the middle. Hit command I in that selection, which brightens that area up. And then let's go ahead and give that a Gaussian blur also. All right. Cool. And now we'll just our opacity. Because again, we, we don't want this to look like, wow, you sure did do that in Photoshop, didn't you? Um, we want it to look like it was done in camera. If we can, you know, that's, that's the goal anyway. All right. Cool. Now we'll see about putting like a tiny bit of a, I'm debating whether I want to put some color in there. In a levels adjustment layer, we're going to go to our blue channel, okay? And then I'm gonna to try to pull up just a little bit here, giving some blue into the shadows and some yellows into the highlights. Now I can click here and use my up and down arrows to do that. I just feel like just a little bit of it is, is could be really nice in this photo. I don't know 100%, but I just, his skin is so nice and This is what's called like cross-processing. Now I'm keeping it subtle, but I'll show you the before and the after. Here's the before and the after. Before and the after. I just kind of like, I like the way his skin looks against that slightly bluish background. Yeah, I do, I like that. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and close that down. Yeah, I like it, why not? Okay. Now, here in my, are my vignette layers. You can see what a good job they've done at making us actually look at our subject. Lower the opacity of that a little bit more too. Okay, let's go ahead and turn on and off our finishing steps. So here's um, before and the after. We're just kind of like looking at our subject a little bit more and we've got some color, which I'm gonna lower the opacity of this just a little bit also. There we go. There's our before and are after. 
Well, all right, guys. I reckon we got a really nice retouch in front of us. I, I think we did a great job with this image here. Zoom out, make sure I like it. Yep, looks good there. Looks good there. Let's look at our before and after. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and group all these layers. We'll hit, all right. Cool. Ready for some before and after time? Here we go. Here's our before and the after. Here's the before and the after. Wow. Pretty good. I like it. I like it. Still looks like him, just looks like a the most perfect version of him ever to exist ever. <laughs> um and he was already insanely um well proportioned already beforehand. But there we go. Guys, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I appreciate you hanging out and spending some time with me. We'll see you in the next section, which is our next complete edit.